The village of Ngatpang in the early 1940s, Suram was born to Nye e Abang of Airai and Ngadrong of Ngatpang. His father passed away when he was just a little over a year old, and so Suram was taken to live with his father's aunt, but was eventually adopted by her son Naklai and his wife Iblai. The couple was childless, and so they gladly took Suram to live with them in Airai. He was very blessed to have Raklai and Iblai as parents since they provided a loving and supportive home for him. Iblai proved to be a wonderful, nurturing, and responsible mother. She was also a devout member of the Emma's church and was determined to instill in Surang strong morals and Christian values. She taught him not only by her words, but by her example to be honest, trustworthy, and to have the courage to do the right thing. At about five years old, Suram was faced with another misfortune when his adopted father Raklai was killed while extracting material from an unexploded World War II bomb. Sometime after his death, Ibla remarried a man named William and the family moved to Ormit. Fortunately for Suram, William was a good stepfather who taught him how to swim and fish. Although Ibla was poor and without an education, she understood the importance of education along with the value of hard work. She worried about her son and wanted him to grow into a responsible adult. So she decided that Suram would go to elementary school in Koror. But this came with some resistance from Suram, being a child who liked to sleep in late. On those mornings that he wouldn't get up for school, Ibla would simply throw cold water on him and again reminding him of just how important school was. When Suram was about eight years old and in the second grade, he faced yet another tragedy with the death of his beloved adopted mother, Iblai, a woman who had nurtured and raised him as her own. Her body was taken to Airai for burial, but his mother's death was too difficult for eight-year-old Suram to understand and accept. So he continually questioned his relatives as to where his mother was and when he would see her again. And so they told him that she was just sleeping, and if he needed her, all he had to do was call for her and she would come back to him. Sural and his stepfather, William, were left on their own and continued to live in Ngarmit. William suddenly decided to move to Ponpe and left Sural behind in the care of one of William's sisters who was of no blood relation to Sural. His step-aunt was reluctant but took him in as a favor to her brother and had Sural earn his keep by doing many chores in and around the house. Sural knew he was not wanted there but he remembered Ibla telling him that as his mother, she loved him unconditionally and that in life, he would need to work hard and try to please others. Suran worked hard and did his best, but a cleaning accident and a misunderstanding resulted in him being asked to leave his step-aunt's house. With nowhere to go, Suran wandered around for hours. Feelings of loneliness and sadness were overwhelming. In his sadness, he remembered what his relatives had told him that if he called for his mother, she would come back to him. So armed with a new purpose, he left Ngarmid and walked all the way to Airai to find the cemetery where Ibla was buried. He sat by her grave for two days, crying and calling out to her and waiting for her to return. On the second day, tired, hungry, and very disappointed, Suran realized that she was not coming back. Memories of his mother came flooding back and the echo of her words telling him how much she loved him and how important school was stirred something in him. He got up and was determined to find a way to go to school. 
He started making his way back to Koror. But as he passed the farm, he was recognized by a woman who saw him and called out to him. Suran mistook the woman for Iblai, but she turned out to be Ngatwai, his late father Raklai's sister. She comforted him and took him home to Ngarulbogl. Surang lived with her for three months until his grandfather Ksao insisted that he come to live with him and his new wife in Ngarusar. So Surang moved and started school again, but now he was living in Airai and to attend school in Koror. He had to swim the Kavi Channel some mornings when no bamboo raft was available to cross. He eagerly attended school and worked for his grandparents while keeping in mind Ibla's lessons about education and hard work. But Surang's education ended when his grandfather and step-grandmother insisted that he quit school to help with the family's livelihood. He missed school, but remembered his mother telling him to be respectful to his elders, and so he worked hard to help his grandparents. He gathered beetle nuts to sell in Koror, farmed and collected trochus. He also went fishing and collected firewood daily. Most of his meals consisted of leftover food. Although Surang worked hard without complaint, it was obvious that his step-grandmother was resentful in the way she talked to him and treated him. Although these were difficult times for Surang, living with his grandparents taught him to be resourceful and appreciative of the island environment. Living off the land, he learned that our environment feeds and clothes us and that we should protect it. Because he was different from other children his age, being orphaned, poor, and unable to attend school, he was teased a lot. In particular, a young man from Irai would tease him. He would say to him, Keep on dreaming because you will never be a passenger on that ship that goes to Guam. You will never amount to anything and you'll be stuck in Palau for the rest of your life. But despite the constant teasing, Surang promised himself that he would prove him wrong and honor his mother's memory by making sure that one day he would get on that ship that would help him become somebody. Surang lived with his grandparents for five years until his grandfather passed away and he had to move again. This time he was taken in by his caring aunt Ngatwai, who wanted him to go back to school. He made arrangements for him to live with his cousin Cecilia and her husband Ichiro Moros in Koror and enrolled him at the Seventh-day Adventist school. At that point, Surang had been out of school for about five years and had a lot of catching up to do. He begged his teachers not to send him back to the second grade, but to let him work to catch up 